Today, I'm going to share with you how to structure an offer with one of the most profitable real estate strategies, and that is seller financing. I'm going to cut through the fluff so you can quickly learn how to structure these offers and make it a win-win solution for everyone. Hey, my name is Chris Goff and welcome. This channel is all about helping you grow your knowledge base, increase your confidence so you can put more money in your pocket as a real estate investor. And it doesn't matter if you're just getting started. I always say, if the seller picks the price, you pick the terms. If the seller picks the terms, you pick the price. If the seller picks the terms and the price, they're not motivated. Follow up with them in 30 days because people's circumstances change in time. So as you can see, seller financing is what we call a term strategy, meaning how much down, how much a month, and how long can we do it for? This is the opposite of a wholesale deal where you need to pay the seller in one lump sum. Just think about it. Almost every major purchase made by most people use terms because they don't have enough cash in their bank account to buy houses, cars, boats, RVs, cell phones, and so much more. All right, let's review what makes up a seller finance offer. The very first thing is what we call the sales or purchase price. What are we gonna be buying the property for? Next is a down payment. Next is an interest rate. That is going to determine the monthly payment. Taxes and insurance, because keep in mind, you're gonna be owning the property. Length of loan, meaning how many years are we gonna amortize this loan out for? Now, most loans are generally either 10, 15, 20, or 30 year loans. Now the loan term is what we talk about with the seller. Now, if we amortize the payment, the loan out for 30 years, a lot of sellers aren't gonna to wanna to wait 30 years to get their money. So we'll do what's called a loan term. Things to also consider, repairs, holding cost, you know, attorney costs for even drafting up the contract and closing cost, any HOA dues. What is your exit strategy? Now this is just for example purposes, but now we're gonna fill in each one so you can see exactly what the offer looks like. And remember, this would be an example offer to the seller. So we set a sales price here at 350, a down payment of 10 grand, interest rate set at 4%, which gives us a monthly payment of 1623.21. Taxes and insurance per month would be 195.83. The length of the loan, we're gonna amortize this over 30 years, but the term with the seller is what we call a five-year balloon. So you could go three years, five years, seven years. You could change this number up depending on how long the seller is willing to do this for. But what this means is we're going to make payments based on an amortization schedule of 30 years, but we must pay the seller off within this five-year term. So whatever the balance owed, you can also buy it prior to the five years. You would need to cash them out. That gives us a total monthly payment of 18 1904 which would be your monthly payment, which would be your principal interest payment, plus taxes and insurance every single month. Now we need to determine the sales price. Now this may be one of the most important steps because you need to understand what is this property even worth? So the best way to do that is to run comparable sales. Now running comparable sales, we can determine the after repaired value, also known as ARV. This would be the maximum value of the property in tip top shape. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. The first way is to contact a local real estate agent. They're gonna have access to what we call the MLS. And this is the multiple listing service, which most homes sold in the US are sold through the MLS. You can also go to REI Pro. And if you're an REI Pro member, you already know this. Um, that's also going to give you access to all sold properties, not just on the MLS, but also any kind of for sale by owner properties as well. So it's going to give you the best of both worlds. When running comparable sales, you are finding properties that are similar and that have sold. Not the homes listed for sale, homes that have sold. You're also looking for similar square footage, bedrooms, bathrooms, age, condition, and location. Now with REI Pro, you can access MLS comps in all 50 states. I have a great training video that walks you through the details of determining the ARV below in the description. You should check it out. Now let's determine the down payment. Now as a rule of thumb, when negotiating with sellers, negotiate the down payment as low as you can because you know that's cash out of your pocket that could be used to repair the home. 
So typically the down payment could be anywhere from zero to 10% of the sales price. Now you could go higher in certain circumstances, really just depends on how the numbers, you know, play out, what kind of purchase price you can get. You know, if, if you could get a better purchase price, you might, you know, put more money down. If you don't get a great uh, purchase price, you might want to consider putting less down. So I think you could go back and forth like a seesaw here just to balance out what do you need to do from a financial standpoint and what does the seller uh, want or what are they willing to take? Let me give you just a couple of no money down techniques. Uh, the first one is what we call a double down payment. So since every home will need some type of repairs, you could tell the owner that you don't want to give them money down and then have to turn around and put money in the home for repairs. Now the seller, you know, could agree with you or not agree with you. And they could say, Chris, I don't really care about that. I want money down. Well, maybe you move to, you know, another strategy where maybe you raise the sales price and try to get in with no money down. Could also provide a testimonial, you know, using testimonials on previous deals is going to show the owner that you're credible and that you've been doing this. You know, a big part of testimonials is the simple fact that do they trust you? And if they trust you, they're more likely to do the deal with you. You could also offer three payments up front, right? So maybe I could get in with no money down, but I'll give you the first three months payments up front. Now, eventually, whatever exit strategy you do decide, obviously you could get that money back. So you're really not spending money out of your pocket. You'll be able to recuperate that money. So just a few different ways to get in with no money down. I'm here to tell you most sellers are going to want something down. The extremely motivated seller would accept a no money down deal because of the situation that they're in. You know, there are some people that, hey, please just cover my monthly payment right now. That's all I want. That's their burden. So uh, most people will probably want something down. Again, keep in mind, you need to keep this as low as you can. Now we need to determine the interest rate. So once you've determined the sales price and the down payment, we need to figure this out. Now there's two numbers um, are, are going to determine the monthly payment. So once we get that purchase price or that sales price, and now we've established that interest rate, um, we're going to put that in a mortgage calculator. It's actually going to give us our monthly payment. Now, from an interest rate point of view, I like to go anywhere between 2 and 8%. Again, this will be very dependent on the deal and what the seller's willing to take. Um, and, and some other factors, too, of you know your exit strategy, where you know if you're buying at this price and the interest rate is this, it, that monthly payment may be too high for you, where you may have to adjust some of these numbers just to make it work for your exit strategy as maybe you're renting the house. So now we'll determine the monthly payment, what's what we call P and I, so principal and interest. So now we have the sales price, we have the down payment. Remember that down payment is going to be subtracted from that sales price. Now we have an interest rate. We're going to use that mortgage calculator and that's going to calculate your monthly payment. So let's determine those taxes and insurance. Now you can simply look up the property on your local tax assessor. You can obviously use REI Pro. We're going to give you that tax value. What what does it cost in taxes for this house? Now, that number is different across the country. All counties have different formulas on how they actually calculate taxes. Then you can get an insurance quote. There are tons of companies out there, but let me show you in REI Pro here. So we've pulled a property up here, and this is just a quick screenshot, our step one through our 10 executable step system. And you can see that tax amount here on this particular property is 700 and $48. A great insurance company um, that uh, we know the owners of, um, good people, and I do believe they do work in all 50 states, but uh, you can receive special rates when you become a member of the National RIA. So they have numerous RIAs and chapters across the country. You might want to check out and see if there's one near you. Uh, if you do become a member there, you can get a discount from the insurance side. Now we need to determine the length of loan and terms, right? So the length of loan, we typically go out 30 years because we want this monthly payment to be as low as possible. Now you could go 20 years, you could go 15 years, but just keep in mind, that's going to increase that monthly payment. So generally we will go 30 years. Now loan terms with the seller is what we call balloon payment. Now, like I said before, most sellers are not going to wait 30 years to get their money. They want their money much sooner. We typically go 5, 10 years. And again, this could change depending on the seller. Seller may say, hey, Chris, I don't want to go past three years. 
I don't want to go past six months. Some sellers say, hey, I'll go 20 years. So it will vary. And I think what we need to look at is a good five-year term, because I think that five-year term is where you really start to build equity in the property. So if you're a buy and hold person, that five-year number is really pretty good. All right, so let's actually structure this offer. So one of the most important things, we need to figure out what that after repaired value is. We did that by running comparable sales on this particular property. Again, this is just an example because I want you to understand it. 395. We also have repairs. So we visited the property and determined that 25,000 would be needed to fix up the home. You're going to have some holding costs during this time that you're remodeling it. Of course, you're going to have paperwork. Every seller finance agreement, I highly recommend having a real estate attorney draft up the paperwork. Now, this cost could vary depending on where you live in the country. There'll be closing costs, right? So we're going to actually close this deal with the seller. That's going to be closing cost on our side. Again, this is going to vary depending on where you live in the country as well. Also want you to throw in payments for three months. In this particular example, I'm just guesstimating the time frame it would take to repair the house before I decide what my exit strategy, if I'm going to rent it, lease option it, sell or finance it, or just sell it. So I want to make sure that I throw this in because those are payments that we're going to have to come out of our pocket, paid to the seller each month. And then exit strategy cost. Again, I just put zero because there's so many different directions you could go here. Like I said, you could rent it, lease option it, sell or finance it back out, or simply sell it. So your price after these expenses, and you could always throw in some more expenses here, but these are going to be the big ones, drops our price really down to 360000 So if these expenses were true and I bought it for 360000 from the owner on a seller finance, I pretty much paid full price for the property. Do people do that? Yes, because they want to use it for a long-term hold. And the great thing is they didn't have to go to the bank because it's seller financing. The property is not going to go on their credit report because it's seller financing. So there are some benefits that may outweigh you know, the fact that you're purchasing it at full price. Here's what my offer would be. Remember that number, 360, that's going to be that price after expenses. I want to start my offer obviously less than that, and it could even go lower. Now, I would recommend just don't even it out. Like in this example, 350000 You might want to do $350,470. You want to make it look strange. Like you must have calculated this number. You can put a lot of thought into it. Okay, you just don't want to throw out an even number. In this example, I think $10,000 down. Keep in mind, I'm still going to need some cash to fix up the home, actually purchase the home, and so on. So $10,000 I would offer to the seller. Now, if they came to me and said, hey, I'll take you know 5,000 down, then I wouldn't offer the 10, right? But what happens if the seller comes back and says, no, I need 50,000 down, I'm still gonna offer the 10 because financially it may not work for me. And again, I would need to run those numbers with a different down payment. Set the interest rate at 4%. I wanna go as low as I can. I think if you go too low, does it make sense? If you go too high, it may not make sense for you right? Because that's going to change your monthly payment, which could affect your exit strategy. Monthly payment comes out to sixteen twenty three twenty one. Taxes and insurance. Now, this was just a tax you know, on this particular property plus an estimated insurance amount. I just combined the two together. Comes out to one ninety five eighty three dollars a month. Again, be sure to calculate that for your property. We're going to amortize this over 30 years, but we're going to do a five-year balloon on this. So I'm going to keep making payments on this property for up to five years. Now, keep in mind, I still own it. The deed's in my name. I just have the owners, the lien holders, like they're the bank. So I could cash them out tomorrow, but I have up to five years to do that. Total monthly payment, which is principal, interest, taxes, and insurance is going to be 1819.04. Now let's look at five years later because we're gonna have a balance that's owed to the seller. Now, if you can see here at month 60, we're going to owe all the way to the right-hand side $307,000. Now, there's two ways to pay the seller off. You can either sell the home or you can refinance the home because that is the end of our term with the seller. Let's look at a five-year breakdown for the seller. Like, why would they do this deal? Well, number one, our balance is that 307. Total monthly payments, keep that in mind, 
that's at 1623. Now, if I multiplied that by the entire 60 months, five years, they would receive 97,000 in just monthly payments. So total paid to the seller in this example is 414, almost $415,000. Keep in mind, we bought it for 350. But after five years, because of interest they have earned on the property, they're actually making more money. So that difference is about $65,000. I want you to remember, they don't have the tenants, the turnover, the repairs. Remember, they don't own it anymore. They're just the bank. We take on all that responsibility. So their profit margin is, is going to be at its highest here because they won't have any additional expenses in the property. And it's a great way to look at from a seller point of view that this is an investment and they're making money on their investment. They're just getting a check from me every single month until I cash them out. They don't have to worry about anything else because now, remember, I own the home. You always want to make this a win-win, right? So there are thousands of ways to structure these deals. So you need to determine where the motivation is with the seller. And, and, and you'll find out, is it the sales price? Do they want a higher sales price? Or is it more about, I want more money down? So I think you're going to figure out where that motivation is just by simply talking to them. You could create numerous types of offers. I might increase the interest rate. I may decrease the term. There's a lot of different ways that you can structure this. And I think it's really coming down is it a win-win? Does it make sense for both parties? So your goal as a real estate investor is to structure the numbers to make it a win-win for all parties involved. Let me give you some key takeaways. Number one, if the seller has an existing mortgage, you're going to need to do a wraparound agreement so that's subject to existing financing because there's already financing in place. Now that won't change the way that we structured the offer, but it is something to note. Obviously, you're going to need a mortgage calculator because you're going to need to figure out your payments. You're going to need to amortize this. You may have to adjust the sales price and the interest rate to arrive at the best monthly payment that works with your exit strategy. Just think about it. If you're going to rent the property out and our total payment is $1,800, $1,900 to the seller and the property only rents for $1,500, well, that's not going to work because that would be negative cash flow. So you may have to adjust some of these numbers to get that monthly payment where it meets your exit strategy. Now, be sure to receive this IRS Form 1098 from the seller um, because it's going to report the interest on the property. Now, this deduction provides up to 100% of the interest you pay on your mortgage is deductible from your gross income along with other deductions, which may be eligible for a tax liability is calculated. So be sure to speak with your CPA on this. I put together a video that's gonna teach you how to get tax-free cash to purchase more properties. You can see that video right here and be sure to subscribe right now so you can receive the latest training videos and learn how to invest in real estate the correct way. And I'll see you on the next video where you'll learn how to use subordination to get tax-free cash to purchase more deals.